That to me is the equivalent of, I don't want to see my ex-girlfriend, so I'm going to wear a blindfold for the rest of my life. It's like, why don't you just accept that you're probably going to run into them at some point? Time in the book a-hole here, and this is essentially me doing a PSA, a public service announcement, because I'm like you, every now and then I'm just on the internet looking for fitness tips, fat loss tips, getting jack tips, because you know, you never want to stop learning when you do, that's when you stop. And the amount of gibberish that you come across, it makes me want to take my own head and flush it down the toilet. Now, I totally get it. If you're just starting out on this fitness palace of love journey, aka the gym, you may not know that it's absolute nonsense, and you may be absolutely spending a bunch of your time in an area where you don't need to. So here is 10 weird, it's always weird, I do it too, 10 weird weight fat loss hacks that really are a giant waste of your time. Number 10 is eating with the wrong hand. Now I do want to make out that if you want to do this stuff and it helps you, more power to you, but as you will see as we go through this list, it's just not worth it. The sheer amount of stress and the sheer amount of time you're going to have to sink into this when you could be working on what's actually happening behind the mask, whatever you want to call it. Well, I just personally think it's too much. But yes, imagine you have a big plate of whatever in front of you, some healthy meal, chicken and rice, chicken, rice, broccoli, right? Green, white. We always do this. And you're eating it with your right hand. You're going to eat that quite quickly, if, if you're right-handed, that is. So then if you all of a sudden try and eat it with your left hand, it's probably going to take you a little bit longer. And I suppose the theory behind this is that you won't want to go and snack or do anything else because you'll actually allow the food to get into your stomach and send a message to your brain saying, hey, I'm full now. You can stop eating. If you have that much time in your life, good for you. But this really does seem like a way to just send yourself crazy. Like, it's hard enough, right, to do anything with your non-normal hand. That's not the right phrase at all, no matter which one it is. So if all of a sudden you're trying to put yourself in a position where you wouldn't be usually, <laughs> that just seems crazy. That to me is the equivalent of, I don't want to see my ex-girlfriend, so I'm going to wear a blindfold for the rest of my life. It's like, why don't you just accept that you're probably going to run into them at some point and do whatever you have to do mentally to accept that and to process it. And it's the same with a diet. Instead of eating a bunch of food that is leaving you hungry, why don't you go and eat a bunch of stuff that is actually satiating? Even if it's getting a bunch of lettuce and a bunch of spinning a bit of spinach and a bunch of vegetables and adding that to your meal because of course it's all full of fiber and it's going to keep you full for longer. It's just an easier way to live. Number nine is to chew your food 40 times. I suppose this ties into the last one, but I saw a bunch of people recommending this. And once again, I presume they mean, so you take your carrot, whatever it is, you put it in, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so on and so forth till you get to 40. That meal is going to take 72 hours to eat. Do you not have other stuff to do? And I get it, it's a distraction technique, if nothing else. And once again, you're probably allowing your food to get into your stomach before you start going, oh man, I just want to eat a chocolate bar. But I think you are much better served getting your food down, try and get into some kind of mental space where you understand you're eating for full fuel or what you are eating is actually nice so it's okay, but then going to do something else. Make a video, go to the gym, go out with some friends, go to the cinema, do your job. I just kind of feel like doing this is just going to program your brain into a routine where you're constantly going, how do we ignore the food? 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 It's like Bart and Lisa Simpson when they're talking to Homer. Will you take this mount splash more? No. Will you take this mount splash more? No. Will you take this mount splash more? No. Will we'll we'll be fine for a week or so, but then you are going to drive yourself crazy. And as soon as you drive yourself crazy when it comes to diet, do you know what you do? You go and eat. It's why you never want to be starving unless you sort of have super duper discipline and good for you. You get to the point where you are so hungry, you're going crazy. Of course, you're going to go eat some quote unquote junk food because you won't care anymore because you'll be desperate for it. Number eight is to laugh a lot. I mean, we have talked about this before. Yes, if you laugh 10 to 15, 20 minutes a day, you can burn like 100 calories or something. But I really don't think you want to be entering a world where you're laughing just to lose calories. And also, it won't be real laughing. You just be walking around going, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. And everyone's going to hate you because when people fake laugh, it's truly annoying. The, the two biggest annoying things of the world are people that fake laugh and people that say song lyrics, right? People that say song lyrics probably need to go to jail. They probably need to be arrested or they need to go on their own island, which is called the people who say song lyrics island and they can just do it all together. Like walking around going, imagine all the people, imagine, imagine. You're like, man, I'm glad I have to put that up with it anymore. This is too much. But yes, don't all of a sudden bring laughter into your diet and food mental space. You really have to give yourself a break. Number seven is to watch yourself eat. Now, I would rather somebody chop my head off than this. I don't want to sit down in front of a mirror and watch myself eat. Well, the reason for it is because you get some sort of accountability 
if you see yourself stuffing bad food away. But I just think that you're you're punishing yourself. Like you want to get a whip. Just go start smashing yourself on the back. I think there has to be a level to this kind of stuff. And if you are struggling not to eat junk food, you're probably better off going to talk to someone or going to your doctor or a medical professional or something like that and say, look, I think I may, I'm not saying you do have an eating disorder, but it just, if somebody said this to me, they were doing all of those things. I'd be like, man, I think you're pushing yourself a little bit too far. And I don't think you're really attacking the root cause of all of this because there's just no need to do it. There's not. And also, I don't want to spend half my life in front of a mirror looking at my stupid bald head. All it's going to remind me is, man, Simon, do you remember you used to have hair? And I'll be like, yes, Mother Nature, you took it away. Number six is don't go out with your credit card. Now, a lot of these articles were pre-pandemic, and I think the world's changed now because we are moving closer and closer to a cashless society. But once again, their point was it's easy to buy things with your credit card. You just go bleep and you tap it on a thing. You can do it with your phone, ipso facto, all of that. So if you actually have to fiddle around for cash, which I suppose you have less of these days, you're less likely to buy a chocolate bar. I don't know. I just don't think that's true. I mean, I guess I suppose it's true because you can't impulse buy as much. But then what if you're out and you actually need to buy something that's not food related and you haven't got your credit card? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's like two plus two equals potato. There's some sense in there. But ultimately, you have just taken two conflicting things and you've tried to push it together. Before the go comments go crazy, no, there's no sense of two plus two equals potato. I don't know why I said it. It just came out of my mouth. I'm just so perplexed by these. They're all here in front of me. And I can't believe they've actually made it their way onto the internet. So once again, if you do stumble across this, I think you're far better off in just trying to aim for a sustainable diet that works for you, that you actually enjoy, that you can do every single day. And every now and then you can go off plan and it's all right because overall throughout a year, you're absolutely smashing it. Number five is wear really tight clothes or do not wear baggy clothes because that just stands to reason, right? When you're wearing baggy clothes and you're eating, you don't feel your expanding waistline. So, oh man, I can eat more. Whereas if you wear really, really tight clothes, you could only, so you could have a glass of water and be like, oh my gosh, I'm fat because you feel it pushing against your stomach. But shouldn't you just be wearing clothes that you like. This is the problem with all these weird fat loss hacks. They all take this one thing that you're obviously struggling with, hence why you're looking for weird fat loss hacks, and then they copy and paste it over other areas of your life where you may be quite happy. Now, admittedly, maybe clothes you wouldn't be happy if you think you're overweight or you're carrying too much fat. And I do understand this. I never look worse, quote unquote, than when I'm about to do a wrestling match because I am wearing the skimpiest and tightest clothes ever, and it leaves nothing to the imagination, right? There is no flattery here. Whatever you've got is going to be on show because everything else is essentially just rubbing up against your skin. But I, I don't want to introduce that into my real life. I don't want to walk around in my wrestling gear just to see if I'm fat or not. I'd rather accept, okay, you're carrying too much weight, deal with it, or you're happy with how you look right now. Look in the mirror. And let me look in the mirror when you're eating. I mean, just go look in the mirror. If you don't like the way you look, for starters, go ask a friend to make sure, because again, we can get up there in our heads. But if you legitimately know you're carrying too much fat, just start a weight loss program to lose it. There where there's less calories going in than there is going out. That was wrong. Calories in, calories out. Make sure you're doing calories out. Before is watch a horror movie. Now you can already see where all of these are going. Watch a horror movie because because your adrenaline and your cortisol levels will go up. Your body will essentially be in fight or flight mode. And then, of course, you'll be in more calories because you'll be more alert. And you'll probably be going, oh, no, something is wrong. Quick, quick, quick. And it's going to be dedicating a load of energy to ensuring that you don't kill yourself. That's what flight or fight is. It's when a car is driving towards you. Your body kicks into gear and says, look, you need to get out of the way of that car. Otherwise, I'm going to die. And I don't want to die. So please don't do it. But you shouldn't start subjecting yourself to horror movies to lose weight. We're here again. Now we're watching films in order to get in the shape we want. These aren't going to help you. They may get you the extra 1%, 2%, but at what cost to your overall happiness? Number three is one that I think makes a little bit more sense, and that is make your health smell of vanilla, because apparently that smell reduces cravings. That one is fine. If you want to buy a vanilla candle or some kind of vanilla thing and put it in every single room of your house so that when you're walking around, somehow that is reducing your cravings. And again, it's going to be an absolutely tiny percentage. That is absolutely something you can do that's going to have no detriment to other areas of your life. So this one is fine. Go get those candles. Number two is sleep in a cold environment. Again, we've done videos on this before. They say if you sleep at a colder temperature, you will burn more calories when you're sleeping than if you sleep at a warmer temperature. But that's the equivalent of going, if you walk more in a day, you're going to burn more calories than if you don't walk more in a day. You can do all these things and at the start of your fitness journey, they're going to be massively helpful, of course, because if your cardiovascular activity is nothing and then you start going for a 10 minute walk every day and you keep your diet exactly the same, you're obviously going to be burning more calories because you were doing nothing before. But after a while, sleeping in a cold temperature and doing a 10 minute walk, unless you get super serious with your food, isn't going to achieve anything. And I would actually argue that if you don't sleep well in a cold temperature, don't do it because rest and recovery is the most important thing in bodybuilding that everybody pretends it's not. We want to go into the gym and eating right, you know, is absolutely crucial. But we forget that we have to allow our bodies rest. We have to allow our bodies to regrow. We have to allow our bodies to get back to zero. Don't spend all night chatting away going, oh man, it's okay. Because, you know, I'm burning all of this fat. 
ultimately, when you get through the next day, your body isn't going to be at its optimal peak anyway. So you'll probably actually put on more fat from the food you put in your mouth. And number one is use a blue plate because the color will make you feel less hungry. I mean, you can me get a blue plate. I will say this. If you're eating off a red plate, an orange plate, a yellow plate, a green plate, actually I think green ties into blue, whatever, a turquoise plate, and afterwards you want to eat, it ain't nothing to do with the plate. <laughs> we can't start blaming crockery. It's because you are craving food and you need to learn how to deal with those cravings. Or again, once more, revisit your diet and figure out how to be satiated by it. A blue plate. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine somebody winning some kind of fitness contest and the interviewer said, how did you do this? Oh, I use blue plates. Excuse me, I used a blue plate. I did nothing else. I think that's the problem with these weird fat hat locks hacks. People don't actually, no one ever actually throws in there, oh, by the way, you've got to be doing cardio. You've got to make sure you're smashing your diet. They make it out like if you do, eat with the wrong hand, chew your food, laugh a lot, watch yourself eat, don't go out with a credit card, wear tight clothes, watch a horror movie, make your house smell of vanilla, sleep in a cold environment and use a blue plate. That's the answer to losing weight. But it's not. None of that is the answer to losing weight. I don't even know what that is. It sounded like some kind of weird voodoo shopping list. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about the video. Always appreciate it. And YouTube loves comments. So that would rock. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. There's a bell right there. Give it a click so you can be part of the notification squad. There's another video on the screen, or there will be in one second. Please do give it a click. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can. Patreon.com for Simon316. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. I mean, Greg Doucette's cookbook, The Power 13 Cookbook. All the description in the links below. And there's codes in there as well for you to get some money off. Simon.bigcartel.com for merchandise. I'm on Cameo. Hit me up. I'll do your birthday message, a Christmas message, a Hanukkah message, whatever the hell you want. Within reason, don't go too crazy. And I'll see you on the next one.